Hello everyone, this is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar. Uh, today I just want to go ahead and go through the uh, sequence events uh, that occur when we actually insert the pulmonary catheter. I talked about it uh, on the prior video, on one of the prior videos, uh, just about uh, kind of how it, how it goes in and we either in, generally will insert it through the, uh, the subclavian um, vein and follow that to the superior vena cava into the right atrium, into the right ventricle, and then ultimately float uh, through the right ventricle into uh, the right or left pulmonary artery, depending on where it goes. And ultimately, we want the distal end of that to uh, go into the pulmonary artery. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of draw um, a, a graph, if you will, of what we should expect to see. So as we're putting them, as you, well, we're not actually going to place these. Uh, it would be a physician. Sometimes they'll do it at bedside. A lot of the times I've seen them uh, actually do it in uh, the cath lab under, under fluoroscopy. Uh, you get a much better uh, view in real time of where that catheter is. Uh, but we still want to monitor, uh, so we'll go ahead and transduce it, and then we'll actually monitor the waveforms and pressures as we're going in. Today I just want to talk about what the waveform will look like. So if you can imagine, um, I, my, uh, I have my Y and my X axis. My X axis will represent time, and my Y axis will represent pressure. And these are going to be relative. I'm not going to be quantitative. I'm not going to put a number. Uh, I'm just going to keep it uh, more visual, and hopefully it's more intuitive that way. Okay, so the first thing that's going to happen as we, we drop the swan in, and we're inserting the swan, and we're transitioning uh, from the superior vena cava into the right atrium. Okay, the right atrium. So, right atrium. All right, what should we see? And hopefully you guys should have a feel for this already. We're going to see the same exact thing that we would see if we were putting in a central line. Because that's exactly the anatomical location that central line is going to be at, or, 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 or um, very close to the right atrium. So what I'm going to see is I'm just going to see a little wavy, fine V-fib looking kind of waveform, and the pressure is going to be low. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to transition through the tricuspid valve, and then that catheter will be where? Well, it'll be in the right ventricle. So right atrium through the tricuspid valve, boom, I'm now in the right ventricle. And then, of course, now that I'm in a ventricle, what's going to happen? Well, my pressures are going to increase. And I'm going to see a waveform that will look sort of like uh, this in the right ventricle. Now, because we're in a ventricle and because there is now a heart valve behind us, right? There is now a valve. The tricuspid valve is behind us. I am going to have two pressures. I'm going to have a systolic pressure and a diastolic pressure. However, because of, by, because of the location of the tricuspid valve is a little different than the aortic valve, when you're looking at art line, the notch that I talked about is going to be a little different if you see a notch at all. If you see a notch in the right ventricle, and, and you may not, um, generally where you'll see it is right here, and you'll actually see it on the left side of the waveform, very important for identifying where this catheter is. And on the left side, because the tricuspid valve is, in, is anatomically placed a little differently um, in reference to where the pulmonary artery catheter is, so instead of a dicrotic notch, which is on the descending, dicrotic, descending right side, this is going to be on the left side, ascending, ascending, anacrotic. That's known as an anacrotic notch. And that is the tricuspid valve that we're looking at there instead of the aortic valve. Okay, so I'm now in the right ventricle. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll inflate the balloon, float it up into the pulmonary artery. Sometimes they won't. But once I get into the pulmonary artery, my waveform should change, and it should look something like this. And what do I have? Well, I have now a change 
from an anacrotic notch back over to a dicrotic notch. And of course, the dicrotic notch is not caused by the aortic valve, but instead it's caused by the second valve that we go through as we go out of the right ventricle into the pulmonary artery, and that's the pulmonic valve. And we're back to descending dicrotic notch. It's very important to make this determination from right ventricle to pulmonary artery. Okay? We need to be able to identify whether or not it's in the right ventricle or whether or not it's in the pulmonary artery. And this becomes critically important when you're talking about troubleshooting. And certainly, um, when I took the uh, flight nursing board exam, there, there were some questions about identifying, you know, where is this pulmonary artery catheter? Because if it, it we'll talk about it in a little bit. But if it's in the right ventricle, it can cause a lot of problems. We don't really want that in the right ventricle. And if it is, and there's ectopy and things like that, we need to take measures uh, to correct that. Now, the last thing that I can do is, um, now that the catheter's in the pulmonary artery, what I can do is I can inflate that little balloon. And what inflating the balloon on the distal tip does is it blocks everything out from behind it. It's kind of like um, looking across the, a Grand Canyon and you see something across the Grand Canyon, maybe a little tree or something. So you put a pair of binoculars on, and those binoculars pretty much block out all of the visual stimulus around you, and, and, and everything else is blocked out, and you're focusing, boom, on that tree. That's what inflating that balloon does, is it blocks out all of this stuff behind it, all of the stuff of the right heart, and you're looking through the pulmonary artery, into the left atrium, into the left ventricle. Now you're not looking directly, it's indirectly, but by blocking out all that other stimulus from behind me, that allows me basically to put on a pair of binoculars and look through the pulmonary artery, down to the left atrium, down the left ventricle. And that is called a wedge. Inflate the balloon, wedges in there. I only do it for a few seconds because I'm blocking the pulmonary artery and it's, it's lethal if I, if I don't deflate the balloon. We'll do it for a few seconds and I'll get a waveform that looks very similar to the CVP waveform, only the pressure is going to be a bit higher in this case, and that's called a wedge. And we can get a pressure from that called the pulmonary artery wedge pressure, the pulmonary um, capillary occlusive pressure, um, pulmonary wedge pressure, they all mean the same thing, wedge. So this is the, the sequence of events as we go through the right heart into the pulmonary artery and wedge it. Hopefully that makes sense, guys, and um, I'll be back. Take care.